Hey guys, Mars Thinking here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so, obviously, things on global a little bit quiet at the moment. Uh, we've got the free to play Easy A's for the Boo Saga units. We've got some missions to do to get some tickets, which I made a video about yesterday. So, if you haven't checked that out, it's got some tips for the easiest ways to do those missions nice and quick because we are going to get more missions over the next couple of weeks to get some other tickets and you can use the same strategies basically. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out. But we're going to be talking about what's going to be coming up next on Global as well as when we can expect it to come out. So if we have a look at the timeline here over on JP, so we had the future Gohan and Trunks LR and obviously some of the Dragon Ball Fusion stuff. And that is when JP then moved into what was for them the New Year celebration where we got the Goku and Kid Buu, which for them was at the same time as the Awakenings for the second set of Fusions units, but before the EZA. So that came as part of the Goku and Buu celebration. So it was actually kind of a W that we got it a bit earlier on Global to have access to those units and a lot earlier which was very cool. So this came out at the very end of December, as you can see, 28th of December, 2021. That's when Goku and Boo released. And then here are those free to play EZA units. And then of course the Dragon Ball Fusions units were there as well. So this was at the very end of December. And then we jumped over to obviously the beginning of January, 2022. And this is where we got, so the first of the Super Strike unit awakenings, the tech mighty mask so obviously if you haven't got uh, him fully farmed up rainbowed make sure you get on that uh, then of course we got the easy a for lr go 10 and trunks as well as the tech and int vegeto tech super boo uh, the int vegeta and the str goku so these were on the 6th of january so if we go ahead and look at the uh, celebration info so this was the start of the New Year celebration info. You can see here 28th. And then as we scroll up, because this is all the part two stuff, we're already starting to get this now with the tight banners. Uh, the tight banners come back for a few days, like four to five days each. And then they cycle through. I might do a separate video talking about whether any of these are worth summoning on or which ones are worth buying with your coins. Let me know down below if that's something you guys would be interested in. Um, and then, of course, we have the LR... Um, Goten and Trunks, they bring out these Easy ALR banners now. Uh, definitely would avoid this. Um, they're good after their Easy A, but I definitely think, especially where we are now in the timeline, um, I wouldn't be summoning on any banners at this point, unless you're still tempted to go for Goku and Kid Buu if you don't have them. But I would assume by this point you've uh, summoned if you were going to already, right? So with the stuff coming out on the 28th of uh, December which was uh, a Sunday, is that right? Yeah, Sunday the 28th, no, that's November. It was a Tuesday, the 28th of December. And then all of this stuff came out on the 6th, which was the following Thursday. So it was basically nine days, right? Like a week plus two days. So if we go ahead and have a look at the global version here, you can see that this started on the 31st, which was the very last day of the month, which was a Thursday. So if we were to go nine days away from that, that is actually today or yesterday, depending on your time zone. So funnily enough, at the time of me recording this, I wouldn't be surprised if when this video goes up, some of this stuff might have actually appeared in the news this morning. Um, so I guess we will have to see. So this kind of stuff could be announced any time. But Dokon usually doesn't drop stuff at the weekend, especially not on global. So for these, I could potentially see this stuff coming on Monday, which would be Monday the 11th. Now, I could be wrong. Because obviously it's already Saturday now at time of recording. This video is probably going to go out on Sunday. Again, depending on your time zone. So it's probably not going to come out today. I could be wrong, of course. It could already be out when this video goes up. But I'm thinking tomorrow morning, aka Monday, if you're in the UK like me. So we will have to wait and see. But in terms of the stuff that we should be getting, we're getting a new set of missions to get extra tickets. But that won't be until the Friday, which is the 15th. But in terms of the units themselves, so we've got LR, Goten and Trunks, um, just like the other LRs of their sort of 
meta. They go up to being a super AGL 4 key and 120%. Leader skill, not really super important, apart from maybe stuff like Battlefield. Um, other than that, you're not really going to use uh, them as a leader very much. Uh, their super attack, so you have the 50% chance to either get fat go tanks or skinny go tanks on their 12 key. Fat go tanks raises defense by 30% for one turn, does colossal damage, and skinny go tanks lowers defense by 30% for one turn and does colossal damage. So, comparing to their pre EZA, they both lowered their own attack and the skinny one lowered defense. So, there is a nice improvement there. But you are still lowering defense if you get the skinny go tanks. Now, obviously, the good thing about these guys is they get key plus 5 to 10 randomly at the start of the turn. So you're not as likely to get completely screwed over and only get their 12 key. Pre-EZ8, it was only 3 to 9. So the minimum has gone up to 5. So on most teams, if you're running a double 3 key leader, the minimum key they're going to be starting with without any links is 11. Now, when it comes to links, they don't have a lot of great key links. Uh, they have Shocking Speed, which is two key. And then, of course, they do have Shattering the Limit, which is another two key. So as long as you can get one of those links active, the bare minimum they're going to start the turn with is 13 key. That means you are still going to have to get five if you get that worst case scenario. So at least you're not lowering attack. And uh, if you get the... Uh, fat go tanks you are at least raising your defense so obviously the fat go tanks is actually perfectly fine to get and um, the skinny one is the one you want to avoid but of course you have no control over it, it is a 50 percent shot and then the 18 key super is again a 50 50 chance for super saiyan go tanks or super saiyan 3 go tanks which has increased it was only a 30 percent chance pre eza uh, Super Saiyan 1 Gotenks, Mega Colossal Damage raises defense by 30% for one turn. And then Super Saiyan 3 Mega Colossal and greatly raises attack and defense for one turn. So obviously you ideally want to get Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. Now the weird thing about this unit has always been, obviously their AGL, so even at 55% they get free level 5 additional. Is then if you get the additional super and you get skinny Gotenks, you're then nerfing your own defense which can be annoying, especially in more difficult content. Obviously, the ideal turn for them is for you to get the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, greatly raise your attack and defense, and then additional into the fat Gotenks, so you actually raise your defense again, and then their defense is actually going to be pretty high. So they get that key, they get attack and defense 150% when performing a super, they get an additional 50% attack if it's an ultra super, and they have a built-in 30% chance to dodge. So they're not the worst, um, not exactly the craziest EZA, but you know they definitely had reached a point where pre-EZA they just weren't really usable anymore. So definitely interested to see what this is going to be like. Of course I will do a team building guide ready for their Extreme Z battle as well. So... Make sure to keep an eye out for that one. And then, of course, we have the two Vegitos, Tech Vegito and Int Vegito. Tech Vegito becomes a crazy good support unit. He does supreme damage and raises allies' attack and defense for 30% for one turn. The fact that it's attack and defense is pretty big, because obviously if he's attacking in slot one, it's both of the other units on the rotation. He gets attack and defense 150. Additional defense 15% for every key sphere obtained. Chance to evade attacks 5% with each attack received up to 30%. And then all allies attack and defense 30% just as base support. Launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super. So this guy's kind of designed to be in slot 1. Although early on in events, obviously he's not going to have any of this dodge chance built up yet. But 15% defense of every key sphere obtained is a really nice addition to the fact that he already starts off with 150%. He's going to be raising on super attack. He's also, of course, getting his own support buff as well. So... If you can pick up a lot of orbs with this guy, then obviously he can be a very strong defensive option in slot 1. And as the turns go on and he's received some attacks, he's going to build up his dodge chance as well up to 30%. Which is not the craziest, but still very, very useful. And then the int one, unfortunately on paper, seems like a bit of a, a letdown. He has the same super attack effect, which is nice. He gets the 150 attack and defense, and then he gets an additional 20% attack for each key sphere obtained. Chance of performing a crit, 5% with each attack performed up to 30%. And then all allies, key 3. So he just gives key. Launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super. So it's weird how, like, starkly different they are. Because he only gets attack from his key spheres, and then he has a chance to crit. And then his support is only key. 
So he doesn't give himself any extra defense or his allies any extra defense apart from his super attack effect. Whereas you look at the tech one and he's doing a lot to help support the team and himself defensively. Whereas this guy is almost just like a classic nuka but with some key support thrown in. Because 20% attack for every key store obtained is nice if you're picking up a lot of orbs but... It just makes him not a viable like slot one unit, so then that kind of wastes his super attack effect. So the tech one definitely seems way more valuable. Uh, of course, we will do showcases for them. Uh, then, of course, we have the Vegeta and the Goku. This is the one time us Vegeta fans can rejoice that the uh, Goku and Vegeta side-by-side -side cards, the um, Vegeta one is actually better. This guy is crazy and is on the 200% team with Margin Vegeta lead. So, can't wait to showcase him. Attack and defense 120. Attack 30 and defense 20 per key spear obtained. Chance to evade enemies attacks 10% up to 30. And then at the start of each turn, he changes tech key spheres to int when there is an ally whose name includes goku on the same turn so this is huge because changing specific key spheres is really really good units that change random key spheres can always kind of screw you over right where you get like a really bad rng with which orbs change whereas he will always change tech so it means on the previous rotation you can leave a bunch of tech orbs and in orbs on the field and then he changes all the tech ones to in and then his stats are going to be absolutely crazy whereas the goku does also get attack and defense uh, with key spheres obtained he gets crit chance instead of dodge and then he changes physical to str when there's a vegeta on the same rotation so their kits are very very similar uh, he gives an attack buff to allies for two turns which is nice uh, vegeta just raises his own attack and defense for three turns so vegeta definitely better defensively not just from the stats but also the dodge chance whereas goku's just kind of all about the damage so he's still going to be quite good, but nowhere near as good as the Vegeta. And then we have the meme that is Super Boo, Dokon fearing the units that can heal apparently. Because uh, he infinitely, he raises attack for one turn, does supreme damage, medium chance to stun. He gets 130% defense at the start of turn, medium chance to dodge, medium chance to crit, and then recovers 30% of damage dealt as HP. But as you can see, apart from this, which is a 30% attack raise, he doesn't have any attack in his passive. So this 30% attack raise is literally just going to be going off of his stats with the leader skill. So he does not hit very hard at all. And then he heals you 30% of the damage that he does, which is why they were obviously scared of him hitting too hard. Which is a bit of a shame. Um, I was really looking forward to this guy's Easy A. Obviously, we've known about it for a while because he's out on JP. But very disappointing because his Easy A could have been a huge boost for Extreme Tech. But unfortunately, it is not. So those are all the things that we can expect with this upcoming second part of the celebration. It is kind of dry, so it's interesting to see whether Global will actually add anything else. Because um, obviously this celebration was missing all of the Dragon Ball Fusions stuff because Global got that a lot earlier. So my prediction is if this video is going out on the Sunday, if it's not up already, then it's potentially going to be up tomorrow morning or I would say probably Tuesday at the latest. So let me know what you're most excited about for for part two. Make sure if you've got any of these units that are easy a and you haven't done so already to link level them. And yeah, let me know what you're looking forward to most down below in the comment section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master Ningen. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.